Okay, now I'm going to do an example of finding the magnetic field of a semicircular current carrying wire at a point that is not particularly at the center. So let's say the point is a certain distance x away from the center. Uh, previously, I've shown the video of how to do this for electric field, how to find the electric field of a certain uh, semicircular ring not at the center. So now we're going to do it for magnetic field. So we're going to start with the Biot Savart law. dB is equal to mu zero i over four pi, dL crossed into r hat over r squared. So we take a little piece of the current. Okay, we, we, that's dL, and then r hat is going to point towards that point. So let's make it a little farther away. Let's say something like that x, and then this one is going to be r hat. Our hat is a unit vector pointing to that point where we want to find the magnetic field, right? So when you do DL cross into our hat, it gives us into the board, right? Into the board over here. All the elements are all going to produce a magnetic field into the board. DL cross into our hat, DL cross into our hat, DL cross into our hat. So they just keep adding up. So we do over here mu zero i over four pi DL times sine of, of alpha over r squared. What does alpha represent? It's the angle between the dl vector and the r hat vector, so it's actually not this angle, but it's this angle here, alpha. The angle between the dl and the vector pointing to that point, that one, okay? So if you look at this triangle right here, this is a 90 degree triangle, because this is the vector pointing to the center, sine of alpha will be cosine of this angle. So it looks like this, like that, DL. This one over here is R hat pointing to that point. This is X, right? This is R, this is alpha. So sine of alpha will be cosine of <clears throat> this one. So what we could do is define this as alpha, just to make it easier. We'll define this as alpha. The vector of this triangle, we'll define this as alpha, so we'll say sine of this angle, which is 90 minus alpha, then after that we'll keep working with this angle from that point on. So we'll say sine of 90 minus alpha, and then what is that? That's equivalent to cosine of alpha, cosine of this angle. So dB is equal to mu zero i over four pi, dl cosine of alpha over r squared. Now we want to find the relationship between alpha and since this is the semicircle right here, this one is theta. So we can use the law of cosines again. We can say r squared is equal to x squared plus r squared minus 2xr cosine of 180 minus theta and then cosine of 180 minus theta is the same thing as negative cosine theta so this becomes x squared plus r squared minus 2xr plus 2xr cosine theta right now we can use the law of cosines again we can say x squared this side from here to here x squared is equal to r squared plus r squared minus 2r r cosine of this angle, right? So you basically are using the, the law of cosines twice for problems such as this. Okay, so how are we going to use that? You see where the r squared is here? We're going to put this one here, x squared plus r squared plus 2xr. r squared is going to equal x squared plus r squared plus 2xr cosine theta. <coughs> and then where it says cosine alpha, cosine alpha, we're going to take this over here, 2rr. R, cosine alpha is equal to r squared plus r squared minus x squared. 
Okay, and then that one cancels that one, and then we have cosine alpha is equal to that one. R squared plus R squared minus X squared over 2R R. Okay? But now we can take this R squared is X squared plus R squared plus 2XR cosine theta, and then substitute it into this one again. So you're, you're doing the law of cosines twice, and then substituting from one to the other one. So let's see here what we get. We get cosine of alpha is equal to, you see where the r squared is? You put x squared plus uh, r squared plus 2xr cosine theta. So basically, I took this and I put it into here. Okay? Then plus r squared minus x squared over 2r, the 2 big R, and then where the little r is, you put square root of this. Square root of x squared plus r squared plus 2xr cosine theta. So what did that do? Well, it's going to create an expression to where I can take that cosine of alpha and then put it into there. So let's see what happens. The x squared cancels the x squared. r squared plus r squared becomes 2r squared. So it's actually going to simplify quite a bit. You have cosine alpha, r squared plus r squared, 2r squared plus 2xr cosine theta over 2r square root of x squared plus r squared plus 2xr cosine theta and then one of the r's cancels one of the r's one of the r's 2 cancels 2 cancels 2 and you get a pretty clean up version of the equation for cosine alpha then I'm going to put it into this cosine alpha and then remember r squared was already there Right? So if we had db was equal to mu zero i over four pi. Okay, so my final equation becomes db is equal to mu zero i over four pi. Right? And then where you have dl, I'm gonna have dl cosine of alpha, you're gonna put here r plus x cosine theta. And then you have square root of this one. Well, that's exactly equivalent to x squared plus r squared plus 2xr cosine theta. So basically, this one times this one, you're going to end up with what? x squared plus r squared plus 2xr cosine theta to the power 3 over 2. Because this is a radical, and then this one is basically just itself. This is r squared, and this is r, which is r cubed. And an R cubed is x squared plus R squared plus 2xR cosine theta to the power of 3 halves. Let's see <clears throat> if this equation makes sense. When I integrate this, I'm going to integrate from uh, 0 to pi over 2, and then I can double it, right? 0 to pi over 2, and then I can double because it's a semicircle, so it's going to be b twice this one. And then how do I integrate this? Well, remember, dl is equal to r d theta. So it looks like this. dl is a little piece of this. This is d theta. So it's equal to r d theta. So we're going to put here r d theta. And then this one all comes out. Let's see if this equation works out. What if I wanted to use this equation to find the magnetic field right at the center? Right at the center. So in that case, x is going to equal 0, right? If x is 0, what happens? This disappears, this disappears, this disappears. And you simply just have b is equal to 2 mu 0 i over 4 pi, 0 to pi over 2. And then, uh, of course, the r comes out 2. Then you have here d theta. And then if x disappears, you have a, just the r. 
And then if x disappears, x disappears, you have r squared to the power 3 halves. So whenever you derive a new equation, it's always good to see if that equation gives you the right result for a certain limiting case. So you can see that the equation makes sense. So right now I'm checking to see if the center makes sense here. <clears throat> What's going to happen? Well, a lot of this is just constant. This one is going to cancel this one. And then you're going to have r cubed. One of the r's is going to cancel this one. You're going to have r squared. One of the r's is going to cancel that one. You're just going to have r. So you're going to have b is equal to 2 mu 0 i over 4 pi r. Then integral d theta is just simply theta from 0 to pi over 2. And you just get pi over 2, right? Pi cancels pi. 2 cancels 2. You have mu zero i over four r. Is that correct? Actually it is, right? Because if you do a complete circle at the center, we know that the equation is mu zero i over two r, right? And if you have n number of loops, it's n mu zero i over two r, right? So if the semicircle came out mu zero i over four r, and you double that, you'll get mu zero i over two r, so the equation does work. Now we can put any numbers that we want, and we can find the magnetic field there, right? Let's see over here. 